it's not really just a question of QE. It's a question of the general level of confidence, uh, the willingness of people to invest. And there's all sorts of things that go into determining the, the animal spirits. Uh, certainly, Europe has benefited a lot from lower energy prices. Uh, they've benefited a lot from the lower value of the euro. Uh, all of these things will help. Uh, I think QE is um, more marginal. Uh, I know that there's a lot of dispute about this. Uh, I think these other more fundamental factors will, will uh, be positive for Europe going forward. That is to say, the, the lower energy prices and the, the lower value of the euro. You know, William, when you look at uh, the unprecedented policy by the central banks around the globe, which of course kicked off with the Federal Reserve post the GFC, a lot of this seemed very, of course, experimental. One gentleman, Raghuram Rajam, has been particularly critical of the, some of these policies, saying that these central banks are really sacrificing and getting into a situation of global currency wars and that uh, there's going to be in some ways a, a lot to pay for at the end of all this policy but I mean uh, you know with all this being experimental what do you think the end game will be I mean what will be the cost of all this QE in the system at the end of the day well what what one hopes is that um, QE in the various places will in fact succeed in uh, lifting up aggregate demand and the recovery will be stronger and more sustainable as a consequence well that's what one one hopes but of course, uh, there's another side to it too, and that is that uh, it won't in fact have the desired effect on, on spending, but it will have a cumulative, uh, it will lead to a cumulative increase in imbalances of various sorts across the globe uh, that in the end could be very counterproductive. So it's really a question of the short term benefits against the longer term um, costs. Uh, the jury is obviously still out, but I'm perhaps more worried about the downside than are, than are many others. How worried are you, where are you William? Uh, given we're talking about the Fed lifting interest rates towards the end of this year, possibly at the start of, of 2015, uh, some mixed data coming out of there. We've talked about Europe. We know what's happened in, Euro in Asia. We know what happened when we saw the taper tantrum uh, last time round in 2013. How worried are you? Well, I guess the, the hope would be, and I keep using this word hope, the hope would be that um, the Fed will uh, raise rates in the context of what they perceive to be uh, the beginnings of, of stronger and more sustained growth. And uh, if that's the case, then I guess all of these valuations that we see in equity markets, uh, uh, junk bonds, um, house prices in many, many countries, these sort of high valuations will be proved, as it were, appropriate, a little ahead of themselves perhaps, but appropriate in the light of a strengthening global economy. Now, if in fact um, that happens, as we hope it will happen, that, that will be the good news. Um, the bad news, and this is something that I do worry about, is that as the rates start to rise, uh, we will get a kind of disorderly outcome. And that is to say that um, all these markets, of course, have, have, have long history of sort of momentum trading, so that when things start to move, they, they could move pretty quickly. Uh, we know that in a lot of markets, there's uh, an absence of collateral for deal making. Uh, we know that um, regulatory um, changes have meant that uh, in some markets, there's a lot less liquidity than there previously was. I'm thinking particularly here about corporate bonds. So it's not hard to tell a story of a disorderly increase in interest rates uh, that would in fact have, a, have, the, have a, 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 an impact, a negative impact on many of those asset prices that we currently take to be overvalued. Uh, 